update which has had a major improvement over the past few days with an update improving its reliability and speed. Now there's been several improvements since I last covered this. So this of course is a hypervisor exploit, so a software only exploit for the Xbox 360, which gives you similar functionality to having the console JTAGged or RGH'd, but it does not require any hardware. However, unlike the JTAG and RGH, this is a tethered exploit, which means you have to rerun it every time you reboot the console. Now, the major downside to using this in the past is that it only had about a 30% success rate. And the other issue is that it could take up to 20 minutes to run the exploit, even if it failed, and then you'd have to rerun it. So it could sometimes take many hours just to get it to run it successfully. Now, that has now been majorly improved because there has been an update from KMX360, which has improved the success rate of this exploit up to about 80%. And on top of that, it also runs much faster, often being able to load the exploit within one minute of loading it. Occasionally it can take longer, but for the most part, it can load it within a minute, which makes this much more of a viable exploit to use if you cannot install the RGH, which is still the preferred method because it's untethered and persists when you reboot. But of course, the advantage of this is that it can all be done through software. All you need is a USB drive. Another improvement since I last covered this is that we also now have this XE Unshackle which applies the necessary patches, the same kind of patches that are applied with the RGH with XE build, which means you can get closer to the full functionality of something like a JTAG or RGH hack with this exploit, being able to apply certain patches, plugins, as well as being able to load XEX files, homebrew, and uh, you know game backups and things without having to manually patch the executables with the XE patcher which was required previously. So in order to set this up, the easiest way is to use one of the tools that sets up the USB for you. There is the bad update USB format tool, and then there's also this bad builder that is available. I think bad builder seems to be more up to date. So this is the one I'm going to use here. You can just download the 64 bit or 32 bit version for your operating system. Now, if you try and run this program, and it's giving you errors. It does require the .NET 8.0 desktop runtime, which you can download here. I'll leave it in the description. Just download .NET runtime for 8.0. You only need to download this and install it if the application does not run on your computer. So the other thing that I recommend installing is the Aurora dashboard, which is a custom dashboard for exploited consoles. So we're gonna go ahead and download the release package here as well. So with all of that stuff downloaded, we want to plug in a USB drive into our computer. Make sure you back up any data on the drive because we're going to be reformatting it using the bad builder. So we're going to open up the bad builder application. Use the arrow keys to scroll up and down. Press enter to select and we're going to select the build exploit USB. Then we're going to head down to the removable drive or USB drive. So just make sure it is the correct drive that you're reformatting. So we're going to press enter on that. Would you like to reformat it? Y for yes and press enter. Obviously back up any data before reformatting. And now you can select with space any applications that you want to install. So in my case, I think if you just press enter, it will select them all automatically. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, press enter here and it should install everything. So we get Simple 360 NAND Flasher, Rock Band Blitz uh, Demo or Trial, which is used to load the exploit, as well as the actual bad update exploit itself. XE Unshackle is all included. And then it asks you which program you want bad update to launch. There's Free My Z, which is kind of the previous version that we used to use to apply the patches. And then there is the newer XE Unshackle, which tends to be the go-to solution at the moment with this exploit. So that's the one I'm going to select. XE Unshackle, press enter. So then it says, would you like to add any homebrew packages? I'll just do that manually. So I'll put an N for no and press enter. Your USB drive is ready to go. So now if we head over to our USB drive, you can see it's now called bad update and it has everything installed for us. Now it also includes things like dash launch and JRPC2 and XBDM so that you can connect applications like Xbox 360 neighborhood and RPC tools to your console. All of that stuff is pre-set up here. So all we need to do is add additional homebrew apps into the apps section. So we have Simple360 NAND Flasher. I'll create a new folder for Aurora. So I'll just call it Aurora and then I'll go into that folder and then we'll open up the Aurora release using 7-zip, which I'll leave linked in the description. And then we can just extract the contents into our Aurora folder. So there we go, that's now installed. So the next thing we want to do is hold down the shift key on your keyboard and right click on the aurora.xcx. 
and then we can go down to copy as path and select that option. Then we're going to go back to the root of the USB drive and open up the launch.ini file. This is your dash launch configuration file that we're going to be editing here. For the default section where it says default equals, you want to paste in the location of your aurora.xcx, remove the double quotes and then change the drive letter to USB. And then that is good. So that means whenever we load the exploit, it will automatically boot us into the Aurora dashboard using dash launch, which is pretty handy. And then whenever we go to the dashboard as well, when we're on another application, it will take us back to Aurora instead of the normal dash. So that is recommended. So we can go ahead and save that. Now there's plenty of other settings that you can configure in here. You've got your plugins that you can edit here. You've got FTP and various other options that are all included in here. So that's everything set up on the USB. However, you should check to make sure you're on the latest dashboard version by heading into the system settings, going to console settings, and then scrolling down to system info. And then if you just hover over system info, it tells you your dashboard version. You can see minus one at seven, five, five, nine. That's the version you need to be on. If you're on an older version, you'll need to update your console to the latest dashboard. I will leave a link in the video description to the system update file, which is right here. You just open up this zip file and extract the dollar sign system update folder into the root of your USB drive. Okay, so with that system update file copied over, we can unplug our USB drive from our computer and plug it into our Xbox 360. So if you're not on the latest update, it should prompt you to update your system software when you plug in the USB drive. And you can just say yes and let it install the latest dashboard update because you need to be on 17559 in order to use this. So once you have the system up to date, we can head over to our My Games section. And then we should have the Rock Band Blitz game now showing up. This is the trial version, the free trial, which can be used to load the exploit. So we're just going to go ahead and load up this game. Now, there are other games you can use like Tony Hawk's American Wasteland, but the Rock Band Blitz trial is free and it's probably quicker to get set up with this. So I would highly recommend using this game, especially since you can actually tell if the exploit freezes because this rolling background that you can see will stop if it freezes and is unsuccessful. So as long as this kind of scrolling background continues to move, we know that uh, the exploit is still running and it's not frozen. If I try to press A immediately, as soon as this loads up, then it would almost always fail to run the exploit. So I normally leave it, you know, just a few seconds, maybe five seconds or so, and then press A to start. And you have less chance of running into that problem. And now you can see it says it's running the exploit. So all you have to do is just wait and hopefully, if everything goes successfully, you will end up with, you know, the exploit running to completion. So, yeah, we can put a timer up on screen here and see how long this takes. It's normally around about a minute, sometimes a little bit over a minute. But, you know, it can occasionally take even longer. It might fail because the success rate is not uh, 100%. It is like 80% or so. So sometimes it will just freeze and other times it will run successfully within a minute or so. And in this case, look at that. I think that was probably under a minute there. And you can see it has ran successfully. So this animation is the uh, XE Unshackle. So there we go. Information pops up here. Um, I'm not gonna blur out my CPU and DVD key because it's been public for many, many years, but people always comment saying, you leaked your CPU key. It's like, dude, it was leaked like 15 years ago. Don't worry about it. But anyway, as you can see, we have got this running successfully. So we're going to go ahead and press back. And because we set up the, you know, launch.ini file and it's running the dash launch, it's going to automatically boot us into Aurora. So there it goes. Aurora is running. Now, it may take a while to open Aurora the first time you launch it because it has to scan all of the content that's on your system. So if you have a lot of, you know, applications and updates and stuff installed on your hard drive of your Xbox, then it's probably going to take a while to scan all of that information. But this will only happen on the first time it launches. After that, the next time you launch it, it should open within a couple of seconds. So when we first load up Aurora, it looks pretty bare bones because we don't have any titles added yet. So if we press the start button, we can head down and you can see that if we go down to modules, we have dash launch active, FTP server and Nova all active. So if we go up to the content section, we can add a path. So if we select manage paths, add, and then change the location, go to our USB drive and then select the apps folder by pressing Y on it. And then at that point, we can then just select the scan depth on two. 
will say it's homebrew because I only have homebrew applications in there. And we will save and that will start adding them as you can see there. And then we'll also go ahead and do the same thing with the content folder. So we'll change path here and we'll go to USB and we'll select content folder and press Y on that as well. And then we can change the scan depth to four. We'll select applications and save. And then that will go ahead and start adding those as well. Now, if you're connected to the network, so if you have an Ethernet cable plugged in or you have the Wi-Fi connected, then it will also download the cover images as well for the application. So they all show up neatly in here. So we've got our Rock Band Blitz game. We've got Aurora. We've got XCX menu. Now, one thing I should also mention, if you're not able to get connected to the internet and you're wanting to know how do you get back to the normal dashboard, because every time you dashboard normally, it will just automatically take you back to Aurora pretty much every single time. And if you want to download your, your covers for your games, that's not downloading. You'll need to get connected up to the network. So what you can do is head back to the original dashboard, which you can do by holding down the right bumper on your controller. So just hold down the right bumper on your controller. And then when you go to dashboard and you say yes, keep that button held down, that right bumper, and then it will take you back to the original dash, at which point you can then go into the system settings. You can go to network settings, go to your network, whether it's wired or wireless and then test the PC connection. Do not test the Xbox Live connection, test the PC connection because Xbox Live will be blocked with live block, so it will fail the test even if you are connecting successfully to the internet or to the network. So testing the PC connection is the way you can actually, you know, make sure it attempts to connect to your network and uh, that way you can see if it's connected successfully or not. And then once we've done that, we can just sign back into our profile again. I'll just sign back in and uh, yep, as you can see, live block is enabled so it won't connect us to Xbox Live and then I can just dashboard and we'll head back to Aurora again. Now we should also dump the NAND. That is why Simple360 NAND Flasher is added. So we'll go ahead and load this up. So there we go, Simple360 NAND Flasher. So we can go ahead and press X if you want to dump your NAND with raw dump V1. So we'll press X and let it dump the NAND. We absolutely do not want to write the NAND under any circumstances here because, you know, writing like a freeboot NAND, like a custom firmware NAND, will essentially brick the console because we don't actually have an exploit that can be used to boot into a freeboot or custom NAND at the moment. But we're just taking a backup of the NAND just so that we have one. If the console ever gets bricked, we have a backup NAND that we could restore. Definitely handy to have it. So there we go, as you can see. We have successfully dumped our NAND, so we can press any button to exit. You can just plug that USB drive back into your computer and then copy the flash DMP dump file to somewhere safe on your computer for safekeeping so that you have a backup of the NAND that you can always restore with a hardware flasher if it's ever corrupted in the future. We also have XCX menu installed, which gives us more complete access to the file system, as well as the ability to launch your applications from in there too. And we also have remote access to the file system through the plugins that are installed, things like the JRPC plugin and the XBDM plugin, which can allow you to connect mod tools. And of course, the Xbox 360 software development kit with Xbox 360 neighborhood, where you can just add in the IP address of your console and add it as the default Xbox 360. And that will give you remote access to the console being able to access the file system from your computer. And you can also launch applications by just double clicking the XCX file and that will launch it on the console. So we can launch a game here like Supreme Commander 2 and that launches it there on the console. So, so this exploit's come a very long way since I initially covered this a few months ago. It's more on par with something like a JTAG or RGH with in terms of functionality, although it does have the downside of having to reload it every time you reboot the console but at least it now runs with a much higher success rate and loads a lot faster than it did previously, making this a much more viable exploit for people to use who don't want to have to open up their console and solder wires to it to RGH it. So hope you guys enjoyed this one or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And as always, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.